We've had some hard people on the show to pronounce, but this one is the toughest of them all. Tara Shaklovsky. Tara, did I get it right? Yes, perfectly. Uh, uh, John Travolta was on the Oscars and he screwed up, so I'm better at least than John Travolta. Tara is the CEO of Iridescent, really interesting company, doing tremendous good in terms of educating young women around the world to become technologists and entrepreneurs. So, Tara, I won't say your last name again. Tara, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Thank you so much. I'm very honored. So, Tara, what does Iridescent do and, and how does it connect with Technovation, this event you're putting on in Silicon Valley in June? Um, Iridescent is a science education nonprofit, and we really want to inspire underrepresented communities to be in innovators in, and the biggest field is technology because you can really use technology to solve some big problems. And uh, we, we believe that there needs to be m many more women in the problem solving space. And uh, so Technovation is one of our programs where girls learn how to program mobile apps to solve problems in their community. And so these are usually middle, middle school, high school and university women and they work with a mentor in technology, a female mentor, and over the period of three months they pick a problem in their community um, and then they try to solve it and then they have to launch a business plan and pitch uh, and make their pitch to VC investors for funding. Tara, how big is the program? Um, so it's the world's largest program for girls in technology. It's the longest running. It's our fifth season this year. And uh, this year we have 3,157 girls as of today registered to... That's um, really remarkable. And uh, the spread, the geographical spread is equally impressive. How many countries are you in? Um, so as of today, we have girls from 45 countries um, interested in solving problems in their community. And how do those girls find you or how do you find them? So that's the hard thing that I've learned that you can't just say, okay, here's an open program and people are going to come to your doors. It doesn't work that way. And um, what we've been doing is driving on the, on the ground grassroots um, recruitment. Um, and so I have a team of four people and uh, we have some amazing ambassadors. Um, we have a powerhouse a global ambassador, her name is Anar Simpson, and partnership with different organizations like um, inter uh, IAEs, Tech Women. So basically they help us find partners in all of these different countries um, and, and that's how the word spreads out to schools and individuals who want their girls to participate. And how are you funded? Um, so we you're, you're a nonprofit. Yes, we're a nonprofit, and uh, we were initially funded by the Office of Naval Research when this program was just a tiny program. You're based in San Francisco. We're based in San Francisco, but we have uh, offices in New York, in LA, in Chicago, um, and so we got an eight million dollar grant from the Navy to scale up our programs, and now we are basically coming out of that research funding um, and going, and, and corporations are. are funding us, corporations that care about having women. Which corporation? So right now we have a fund from Google, um, that's our main uh, funder. The different regions across the world, so we'll have 10 regions and the teams submit their video of a pitch and their video of their prototype app and then uh, finalists, 10 finalists will be chosen and they'll be flown to Silicon Valley to come and present to a panel of VC investors um, and so that's Wow, well, who, 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 who's on the panel? So we don't have we don't have a panel yet, but uh, past people have been Ben Horowitz. Um, he's been a, a keynote speaker, and uh, we've had Maggie Johnson from Google. We've had Ruchi Sangvi, who was the VP at Dropbox. We've had some pretty awesome um, investors and um, experts from the field be judging. And what do they win, the winners? So um, the top team wins um, basically 10K in for funding to take it to the to market. This year we have three divisions because we've scaled up. We have a middle school division, a high school and university, and uh, we'll offer a monetary uh, reward, but also support to fully finish the app. And um, can people actually come to the event itself? Yes, we would love people to come to the event. So I think the date is June 18th, and we once we make it public, um, then we're going to open up the tickets. So essentially it's like a, a, a giant hackathon for high school girls, is that right? That's right. Uh, over a longer period of time, um, the final event is just a celebration that the community comes to see um, these girls from all over the world. Last year, we had a team from Brazil, we had a team from Nigeria, and it was so inspiring to see the ideas that they are coming up with. So the Nigerian team came up with an app to protect policemen because in their country, police, traffic policemen don't uh, are, are on foot. So when there's a traffic offender, they run after them, and they are the first casualties. So they created an app to 
basically take the photograph of the license plate and, and report the incident. And um, the First Lady of Nigeria came to rec recognize and comment them on their app. So other apps really represent what girls, why their perspective is so valuable. We had one app from Yemen uh, focused on early marriage. We had one app from... And what, 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 what did that app do? Um, so to raise awareness uh, of this problem. Um, I think it was it was a first step in that direction. Um, the girls are very young, right? So I think it's... How, how, how young, uh, how, how old are the youngest girls doing? Um, so we've had a fourth grade team compete. Um, and But I think this year we have middle school, uh, high school, and university women. Uh, so each of those divisions will be coming up with their own ideas. Are there particular areas that you see very, very exciting. We had a guy called Chris Schroeder on the show a few months ago who talked about the, the sort of the, the innovation going on in the Middle East, in the Arab world. Is that an area of great innovation or do you see it everywhere in the world? I think it's not so much as with geographic region as the kind of the group that we're targeting. Just because you're getting women into this problem solving space, the ideas that they're coming up with are so far ahead of what the what the general environment is. The general environment of apps are primarily there are white male engineering teams that create these apps. You mean in Silicon Valley? Mostly. And um, I think uh, what we've seen is that the girls are literally like three years ahead of, of the, the environment. So we had the exact same Pinterest app, the exact same Uber app, the exact same Instagram app before these apps were even on the market. Uh, we've had, um, a, and I but think that's kind of depressing, isn't it? That these apps weren't the ones that got the, the billion dollar investment. Um, I think we are learning, right? I think we'll have so many. When you so say we, you mean women the, in general or no, your organization? My organization, because I think we are trying to figure out what value does this program provide to the world in general. And what we are seeing is we just finished a big look back survey and 30% of the girls go and, and pursue computer science in, in university. Um, so we are re literally changing their career paths. Um, and this is positive. This is not self-report. It's actually what they did. So what you're saying then to VC VCs who might be watching is that the young women you bring from around the world are actually ahead of Silicon Valley. Totally. That is so clear. Like there was an, a, a study done by Inc. I think yesterday, or which was published yesterday, that said teenagers are really the ones to be watching out for because they're totally ahead of the environment. And I would go even a step further to say teenage girls are even more ahead of the field than than what we the current like software engineers are. So what we for us the next exciting project is to develop an incubator where every girl showcases their. It's kind of like a Kickstarter page, but uh, showcases her apps, her business plan, her resume, and. And then on the other end, we, we have a very tightly sort of monitored community of resources, mentors, possible investors, universities, corporations that want to hire these girls as interns. Because the brain <laughs> sort of tank of, uh, of the, that, that this program represents is very special and it's becoming very large. So we have 3,000 girls enrolled this year, but we've already had 1,300 girls go through this 60-hour program. Many of them go on to do internships in technology. Many of them go on to start businesses and clubs. Um, and so I think it's very, very exciting to see the scale and the depth of this um, of the impact that we are able to have and and technology is the main way we've been doing this it, initially we used to train all the pro the girls ourselves but then we realized it was very hard to hire an educator who had computer science in her background and who was an entrepreneur and was interested in teaching girls. So we maxed out at 10 different locations across the country. So then we took all our curriculum, made it free, put it up online like a massive, like a MOOC. And when we did that, um, we, we basically opened up this high quality curriculum for anybody in the world to access. And leveraging technology in that way really was a differentiating factor for us. Tara, finally, you've spoken very positively, but of course there are still barriers, problems, problems in terms of young women entrepreneurs breaking through of dealing with stigma, uh, discrimination. What's the one thing that you still think needs to change to enable these remarkable young women to develop products, build companies, and generate wealth in their communities? I think the the hardest thing is the cultural perception and the the, con the sense of self-efficacy that a girl has, that this is not my field. And this is a very, very hard problem to, to, to sort of solve because even in such a f uh, sort of forward-thinking community as Silicon Valley, um, girls routinely, like the first year when we had girls create apps, all the girls created fashion apps. 
And that was really, really sad to me because they, they could not think beyond what the culture expects them to think. Um, and so what we realized is that uh, that's why you cannot just post a flyer for Technovation and girls are not going to sign up. This is not a program that's going to grow viral because the deep-seated attributes that girls have are, are very almost insurmountable. And it only works when you have people go and tell girls, like, look, this is a different way of thinking. And to me, I honestly, I think media is the only way to solve it, uh, where you have role models that are but that are portrayed in mainstream media as that this is an accessible career for me. Or um, I think this is where countries like India and China, where poverty is such a big thing that that overshadows all the other, and that's the only way you can come out of your um, your challenges. Well, Tara, this is really very, very encouraging. It's remarkable. We often have shows about women and technology, but they tend to be shows that focus on negative stuff. Your stuff is so positive and exciting. Uh, and once again, how can people find out about Technovation, the event taking place? When is it? On, on June the 19th? June 18th? June 18th. Um, at Intel in the evening and in Silicon Valley. And um, the website is technovationchallenge.org. Um, and uh, I think we, we need women mentors because we had such a big increase in the girls' registration. Well, um, women mentors out there, contact Tara. That would be awesome. Real pleasure to have you on TechCrunch TV. And we will have you back on again after Technovation in June to find out who the great winners are in this competition. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you, Andrew.